Hello and welcome to this video on the value of organic food. Eating organic is one of the more common New Year's resolutions, but how much value do you get for this decision? And is it any safer or better for you than conventional produce? Let's begin by removing the illusion of natural is better. There is a perception that man-made or altered is bad or less good as a product. Organic is seen to fit into this because it does not rely on man-made fertilizers or pesticides, or many of the GMO crop varieties. This is contrasted with conventional crops that rely on massed concentrated fertilizers, pesticides, and GMO varieties in some cases. Organic farming universally has lower crop yields per an acre used. This is one reason that organic costs so much more. The problem is that the arguments for organic fall into the fallacy of naturalism and false dichotomies. This is the previously mentioned natural is better idea, and that many organic practices overlap with conventional farming, and yet there is selective representation of this. Natural is just not always better. There are areas such as pesticide and fertilizer use in which organic is purported to be better, but the practice is similar to conventional soil replenishment techniques. Organic just adds a layer of mysticism and superstition. This superstition is extended to the consumer who believes that organic has a better nutrition profile. Unfortunately, this is based on flawed comparisons. Many studies take organic produce, which is generally smaller than conventional produce, and compare the two wholesale. This means a 100 gram organic apple is compared to a 125 gram conventional apple. The same total amount of nutrition, or very similar profiles, may be in both apples. But if you try a weight to weight comparison, the conventional apple is 25% lower. The reality is that you are not going to eat only three quarters of the apple, and this is where organic proponents get stuck. On a basic measurement, organic and conventional produce have the same overall profile. This leads into another concern, and that is with eating pesticide residue. Organic proponents claim that organic is safer because it uses no pesticides, or in the case of informed arguments, naturally occurring pesticides. The idea is that natural or no pesticides are better for both the farmer and consumer. The problem here is that organic farmers use pesticides and herbicides that lack specificity. This means they attack everything when used. Conventional farming is not innocent of using pesticides, but they are very specific and targeted. For more details on this, See the glyphosate video linked in the top right. The organic counterparts to conventional pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides are an issue. They lack the efficacy seen in conventional farming. For example, vintners will rarely get organic certification because organic fungicides last a week compared to the three weeks of conventional fungicides. This is important to vintners as fungus is a significant threat and they need a cost-effective means of managing it. Organic vintners and farmers need to apply fertilizers and pesticides more frequently and in higher concentrations, which feeds into the cost of the produce overall. There is some evidence for pesticide residue on conventional produce. As was explained in the glyphosate video, the amount of residual pesticide on conventional produce is minuscule. The problem can largely be mitigated by washing your fruits and vegetables. Even when this amount is higher than what is found in organic produce, it still falls well below any safe levels that are legislated or shown to have a biological effect. What is not below safe limits are the bacterial contaminants. This is related to the fertilizing practices of organic farmers and the two are somewhat inseparable. Organic farmers rely on fertilizers of unknown providence. Conventional farming relies on commercially produced concentrates, which are then diluted with water. 
This is primarily made from the three elements nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, along with some binding agents. Organic farming uses things like manure, fish emulsions or food waste. This leads to a secondary problem, nitrogen leaching. Organic farming methods for fertilizing tend to leach more nitrates into the environment and this transfers into the water supply faster than conventional methods would. The problem is that the organic farmer uses a lot of filler in this fertilizing process. That is something in there that is not the three elements needed by the plants. This often will include ample mass to store bacteria. This is particularly true of manure-based fertilizing. The numbers for this come down to a simple system. Organic has a roughly 5% increase in bacterial contamination compared to conventional farming. This is a minor difference, but it has huge implications. Organic food accounts for 1% of total food sold in the United States of America, but it accounts for 8% of diagnosed E. coli cases. And this is going to play into the next claim of health benefits, as many proponents of organic claim that their food as a whole is better for you. Long-running reviews of this have found no evidence of positive health effects of organic produce overall. More important is that there is almost no nutritional difference in the food overall, except in isolated cases, and these are often geographically discrete. Then there are arguments about aesthetics, in particular taste and colour. Organic food is often claimed to be better tasting and to look better, but in blind trials there is no evidence to support the appearance of it or the taste. Finally, you should know that most organic produce is sold by large corporations. You are not supporting the small guy, the local farmer, or more environmentally friendly practices. To take one example from the research for this video, California produces $600 million of organic produce, and the bulk of this comes from just five farmers, and 70% of organic milk comes from one producer. The catch with this is that the five farmers who make the most of organic produce also produce conventional crops. And this is why the perception of organic being better for the consumer and producer is flawed. You are largely not supporting the local independent, but large corporations in disguise. All of this is not to say that conventional farming is all sunshine and puppies. Mass monocultures are a concern. GMO crops transferring genes are another, and runoff of over-fertilizing is yet another concern. These do not affect the person buying food at the checkout, but the farmers, and they need to follow the best practices, something they often do, or at least make every endeavour to do, because it's in their interest to both their bottom line and their property. Spending your money on food that costs more for no benefit is waste. You are better taking extra money and dedication for this organic diet and joining a gym eating in moderation, and overall enjoying your life. This will give you a direct benefit without the appeals to nature and false equivalences often seen in organic arguments. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it useful, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.